Hi everyone, this is part four of AWS Event Driven Pipeline series. If you want to watch earlier videos, please check out this playlist in my YouTube channel. As part of this series, we are working in a project which is totally event driven based. Let's do a quick recap what we have achieved so far. Let me go to OneNote where we have our diagram. So as part of development of this diagram, as of now we have created source S3 bucket, target S3 bucket, SNS, SQS, glue job. Whatever component we have created, we have also tested them. In this video, we are going to create this Lambda. Now, what is the task of this Lambda? As soon as some user uploads a file in this S3 path, this Lambda will get triggered. Of course, it will get an information from this SQS because this SQS is nothing but a trigger for this Lambda. Once the Lambda have that information or that message in a form of an event from SQS, it will process that event and fetch out some important information. What important information? It will fetch the bucket name and file prefix for which the message or event got generated. After that, it will call the glue job passing those two arguments which it has evaluated. Now let's see the code of this Lambda first. This is the code of Lambda where we are importing JSON and Boto3 library. If you want to work in any AWS service, then Python provides you a Boto3 library. Using this Boto3 library, you can create a client of other AWS services. For example, here we have created a glue client. Now what we are doing over here is whatever message the Lambda has received, we are trying to fetch the information which we need from that message. As we have discussed in a glue job, we need these two arguments, right? Bucket name and file prefix. So Lambda will fetch these two information from the message. How it will fetch? Let's try to discuss it. I already have a sample event. This event will be gen getting generated from S3 notification. First of all, this event will go to SNS. From SNS, it will go to SQS. And from SQS, it will go to Lambda. So I already have one test event with us. We can check it out how we will be fetching the required information from it. If you will see over here, this event is nothing but an array of records. And inside this array, we have dictionaries. In this dictionary, we are only interested on this body part. Inside this body, we will have one message. Inside this message, we will have two properties. One will be bucket. Inside bucket, we will have a name. And this name we want. This is nothing but our bucket name. Right. So once it has find out the bucket name, the next it will try to find out the object key, which is a file prefix in our case, and this value it will fetch. So one is our source bucket name and another is our file prefix. So this is what we are doing in our code. If you will closely notice from records, from body, inside that body, we are fetching message. Inside message, we are trying to fetch S3 bucket name, then S3 object key. So once we have this bucket name and file prefix, now Lambda is ready to trigger our glue job. If you want, you can print these parameters first. After that, you can use that glue client, which you have created in line number eight. Using glue client, we will use the start job run function, which will take two arguments. One is job name and another one is arguments. These arguments are nothing but whatever we have calculated in line number 12 and 30. Here we need to give our job name. Our job name was EDP hyphen glue, if I'm not wrong. Here is our job name, EDP hyphen glue. We are good to go. Let's copy this code and open Lambda page. You can search Lambda over here, open it in a new page. Now here, this is a Lambda dashboard. You can click on create function. Here we will author it from scratch. It is asking for the name. I will call it EDP function. Or I will call it EDP ETL hyphen function. Then runtime will be Python 3.11. Rest of the other things will remain same. You can click on create function. So the function got created. You need to click on code and overwrite this code with the code which I will provide to you. So our code is ready. If you want to deploy it, you can deploy it. But notice one more thing. If you will go to configuration, you will go to permissions, then you will see that it has also created one IAM role automatically for you. You need to open this IAM role. If you will go to the diagram, you will see that this Lambda is getting messages from SUS. That means whatever I am role we have for this Lambda, that I am role should have permission to receive messages from this SQS. So we are going to provide that required permission to our SQS. Other than that, our Lambda is going to call glue job. That means our Lambda should also have permission to run glue jobs. So let's provide SQS and glue permission to our I am role. Click on add permission, attach policy. Here you have to search for SQS. I'm providing full permission. Then you will have to search for glue. I'm providing AWS glue service role, add permission, 
and those two permission got added over here sqs and blue okay now our lambda code is ready we have not added any trigger because we will test it first with the test event okay in order to test it with the test event let me do one thing let me go to s3 path here we have already uploaded one file right as part of previous video i'll go to edp source sources and this file i'll copy the s3 uri now i have already told you that i have one test event which we can use to test our lambda let me keep it over here we had that bucket name over here we need to write our bucket name over here similarly you need to copy the file prefix and we can again check where we have objects and key object key here i need to overwrite it with my file name okay we have overwritten it now our test event is ready let me copy this test event okay you need to copy starting from the braces and ending with the braces copy it go back to your lambda go to code here you can click here and configure one test event i'll give it like i will give it a name as test one provide that event over here it will cross check if this json is okay or not if you want you can format it also now save it now your test event is configured if you will click on this test button it will automatically take the test event which you have just configured otherwise you can also test it by clicking on this button and again the same window will open for you but i don't want to come over here again and again so i have configured my test event now i need to run it and my expectation is what it's going to do is as part of this lambda it is going to fetch that bucket name and file prefix which we have provided in this test event then it will pass on that information to this glue job ultimately this glue job should run so let me also open the glue page etl jobs let me open my glue job over here etp glue let me go to runs and i am expecting a second run should start once our lambda will get triggered okay let me trigger my lambda here you will see that everything went fine now we will go to glue job click refresh and here you can see that it has successfully triggered our glue job let's wait for 15 seconds meantime let me go to the target bucket inside that we need to go to target and orders and here you see that we it has already processed that file at time 15 16 it is 15 16 over here so our lambda got successfully tested with the test event now here comes the interesting part now we need to add a trigger right as per the diagram if you will see for lambda our trigger is sqs okay. so let's do one thing before adding this trigger let's make a connection between this source path and this source sns so by this time you should know what i'm talking about i'm talking about creating a s3 notification let's cross check whatever step we have achieved so far we have created a lambda we have modified our im role we have tested our lambda with the test event and the next step is to create a s3 notification okay here is our source bucket you need to click on properties if you will come down over here you will see one option with the name of event notification here you need to click on create event notification i will call it edp hyphen event let me do one thing let me open this bucket in another tab and inside this bucket we have this source file folder we need to create a s3 notification on top of this folder only because ultimately the users will dump their file inside this folder let me go to the event notification page here in prefix we need to provide that path if you want you can also provide the suffix like in our case we already know that every file will be in .csv format if you want to be very specific then you can write .csv over here this will make sure that if by mistake any user has uploaded a file without .csv extension then this s3 notification will not get triggered okay event type we are only interested in object creation events so let me click on all object create events after that it will come down destination for us the destination is sns topic so let me click on sns topic after that it will ask you to choose that topic in our case it is edp minus topic now let me try to save the changes but here you will see that we are going to receive one error let it come and then we will discuss about it so i am clicking on save changes and here you see that we have received one unknown error which is saying unable to validate the following destination configuration so from error it seems like we do not have this topic already in place let me cross check 
here if you will go to sns click on topic then you can see that edp hyphen topic is indeed existing but if it is an existing topic then why we are getting this error that we need to check so here i am not much happy with aws because this it because this error is not self explanatory and it is somewhat confusing for the audience so if you remember when we created a sqs then we provided one access policy in sqs so that sns can publish message to sqs similar way we have to provide a permission in sns so that s3 can send message to sns okay that means we need to go to our topics open the edp my fun topics if you will come down and click on access policy you will see the policy this policy we need to change i'll go back to my notepad and i have also shared the document where you can see which policy you need to implement i have already copy pasted the sample policy we just need to make changes related to our component so let's read what we are doing in this policy so we are allowing something but to whom we are allowing to s3 service but what we are allowing them to publish a message to sns topic okay but to which topic so here you need to provide your topic arn you can go back and you can copy paste this topic arn and put it over here after that it is saying that the source arn should be like what here you need to provide your bucket name okay because the source notification will be coming from your bucket itself so let me come down and i need to replace it with my bucket name rest of the things will remain same here you need to provide your source account you can go to your aws console click on this button and here you will see that this is your account id you can copy it and paste it over here so our sns policy is ready let me copy it go back to my browser i will click on edit come down this is the policy we need to change click on it replace this policy with the policy with which we have just created and rest of the things will remain same click on save changes as soon as you have updated the access policy now you should be able to create the s3 notification on top of your sns topic let me try to save it now and this time it had allowed me to save it now let's do one thing let's check sqs i want to show you something so here you will see that in our sqs queue we have received two messages i'm not sure why there are two messages but let's quickly check what all messages we have in here click on send and receive message you need to pull these two messages let me click on them i got those two messages let's quickly notice on the recent message which we have received i believe this is the recent one let me open it let me copy it in the notepad and here if you will closely notice then you can see over here that this is nothing but a test event okay at this point of time i would ask you to ignore this message because this might have got generated because of some testing which i was doing you only focus on this one we need to check why we have got this message in our queue right and that too it is a test event so the answer for that is whenever you will try to create a s3 notification as soon as you are done with creating it s3 service will send one test message to the corresponding subscriber or the corresponding target in our case the target was sns sqs has already subscribed it so ultimately the message went to sqs okay and that's why we can see that there is a test event in sqs now you should get an answer why i have not created a trigger earlier for this lambda because i do not want my lambda to trigger for this test event okay but in production you have to handle this test event as part of your lambda handler group okay let me do one thing just to avoid any confusion i'll purge this queue you can click over radio button click on action purge copy this purge and i will purge this queue okay now we are good to go and let's create a trigger for our lambda okay i'll go back to my lambda let me refresh my page here i need to click on this trigger button add trigger here you click on drop down box type sqs it will ask you to put down sqs name i'll keep edp queue rest of the things we can keep them as is i'm not going to discuss these properties let me click on add button so this trigger is getting added right now it is saying that trigger is in disable state but it will take 20 seconds around to and after that it will automatically become enabled how you can see that trigger if you will click on the configuration you will be able to see the trigger and you can see the state it is creating you can click on detail and it will give you all the details related to this trigger let me refresh and this trigger got enabled now let's see what we have achieved so far we have completed our pipeline till the point glue job 
So at this point, if I will copy any new file into this S3 path location, then S3 notification should automatically get generated and one message should go to SNS. And SQS has already subscribed it, SQS should get that message. And SQS is working as a trigger for our Lambda. Our Lambda should automatically get triggered. This Lambda will take information of that file and further it will trigger the glue job. And this glue job will further process the file and save it into target path in a parquet format. Let's upload a different sample file in source path. Let me go back to our source bucket. So this was our bucket ADP source. I'll go to source file. I will upload order minus two dot CSV this time. Click on upload, add file. And I will upload order underscore two this time. Open, upload. As soon as I, I have uploaded it, I'll go to the, I'll go to the queue. Where do we have that queue? Yeah, here, let me refresh it. I think Lambda has already processed it because Lambda runs very fast. So let's directly go to the glue job. Let me refresh the earlier run. And here you can see that it has just triggered our glue job at 1531. So you see that how fastly it has happened. Within a frame of second, the message went to SQS. And I think Lambda took only one second to get triggered. And it has already triggered glue job. This glue job will finish in another two or three seconds. I think it has already got succeeded. Let's go back to our target location. I'll go to target bucket and we should receive third file over here at 1531. So our source file got successfully processed. If you will click on the content, then you should get the data starting from 101 to 200. Let me click on it. We need to define output setting. Let me keep CSV. And here we can see the data starting from 101 to 200. And in this file also, there were some duplicate starting from 191 to 200, which whichever glue job has already deleted. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, we are going to create a crawler, one Lambda, which will be used to trigger this crawler. We will also create one glue database or Athena database. After that, we will verify our data, if our data is getting reflected correctly in Athena or not. So if till this point you were with me and you think this content is worth watching, please like and subscribe my channel. I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, keep learning. Take care. Bye-bye.